Hi, my name is Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. Back in 2017 I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing yacht for the price of one dollar and since then with the help of a lot of amazing people I have been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the aim of sailing it back to the UK where it was built. This video is going to be mainly about installing the drive line, so that is the stern tube, uh, the stuffing box, the prop shaft, uh, there's going to be some other stuff going on as well. Uh, but the first thing we're going to look at is the thrust bearing and that is an AquaDrive unit which was very kindly donated to this project by AquaDrive, so very grateful to them. It's a really cool unit, we're going to unbox it, have a look at it and then talk about uh, what it does and why we're using a thrust bearing. So the AquaDrive unit is really two things, it's a thrust bearing and a CV joint. Uh, and so it goes in between the propeller shaft and the gearbox of the engine. The thrust bearing part of it is mounted on a secure structural mounting bracket um, and that basically absorbs and transfers the load of the propeller and the prop shaft into the structure of the boat without that load going through the engine, through the gearbox and through the uh, engine mounts. And so it reduces the stress and the wear on the gearbox and the uh, bearings and the rest of the engine. So that's one purpose. Uh, the other purpose is to reduce noise and vibrations. Now before we look at how we're going to install that, we're going to catch up with George who is about to install the limber chain. Uh, now that is a bronze chain which is going to go through all the limber holes. Those are holes in the underside of the bronze floors. Uh, they hold the frames down to the keel timber uh, and there's holes in the underside of them to allow water to flow through the bilge of the boat down to the lowest point where it can get pumped out but the limber holes can get plugged up with dirt and detritus pretty easily. And so running a couple of lengths of chain through them all through the length of the boat, have bungee cord on one end and then on the other end, you can just pull them backwards and forwards and that should clear out any rubbish in the holes and allow the water to flow freely. Damn, that's uh... This is my chain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's good. It gets a little hard on the neck eventually, yeah. but uh, I like to wear it out for as long as I can. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna run through the bilge, and we'll use it to clean up all the nasty stuff that builds up in the bottom there. So before we actually think too much about mounting the AquaDrive, uh, I want to bed and fasten the stern tube uh, into the hole that I previously drilled in the stern post, uh, just to make sure it's not gonna move at all. If there is a little bit of slop in that hole, uh, we wanna make sure our alignment with the AquaDrive and the prop shaft is bang on. Um, so we're gonna get that in its final position, bedded, fastened, and then we'll be good to move forwards.
All right, so in this mysterious package is the bracket that's gonna hold the thrust bearing in place. Um, it has to be very strong, it's taking a lot of load, um, and this was designed by a guy called Dean in Seattle who has been a great help. I've done a lot of CAD work, a lot of design work, and actually um, helped with the machining of this. It was made down there and um, welded down there, and I'm really excited to actually see it, so let's get it open. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow, this thing is really substantial. Wow. So, thrust bracket's gonna go in here. That's gonna bolt down to the um, bearing beds, if you like. Oh, that is certainly not gonna bend or go anywhere at all. It's really solid. Oh, and he put tally-ho in it. Isn't that nice? That is some really, Beautiful machining work and some very nice welding. <laughs> So that AquaDrive bracket is actually designed to notch down into the bearing pieces so that it has a positive fit against them, uh, which will help transfer the load in conjunction with the bolts, of course. Uh, that also lets us fine tune the angle to make sure it's properly aligned with the prop shaft. So I've got to take some very careful measurements and then use a router to create a large notch which that bracket can fit into. So we've got the AquaDrive unit installed and it's aligned perfectly or at least very, very well with the prop shaft coming through the stern tube. Now the AquaDrive is not aligned with the engine and gearbox because it doesn't have to be. And in fact, it's apparently slightly better if there's some misalignment there because the AquaDrive unit is able to wear more evenly. Now we also installed the stuffing box which is at the forward end of the stern tube. So the stern tube is just that, a tube which goes through the stern post prop shaft goes through that tube. On the aft end of the stern tube, there is a cutlass bearing which supports the prop shaft 
and it has a lot of slots in it which allows water to go through and to fill up the stern tube. So the stern tube is actually full of seawater as, as well as the prop shaft being in there. Uh, so at the forward end of the stern tube you need some kind of seal to stop that seawater from actually going into the boat um, and we're using a traditional stuffing box uh, which is a bronze piece of hardware which is attached to the stern tube by a hose in this case um, and it has a sort of inner piece and an outer piece. The inner piece goes inside the outer piece uh, but before it goes in you stuff some packing material in there and then as the outer piece squishes down on it with the help of studs and nuts that packing material expands against the prop shaft and seals it. Now this system is designed to actually drip a little bit so a little bit of seawater is supposed to come through the packing and drip out of the stuffing box uh, and that is normal. There are other systems available these days which are dripless um, and they work in a slightly different way. There's nothing wrong with them but I prefer this more traditional style although it's a little more hands-on and uh, takes a little more maintenance. Uh, if it goes wrong you're able to fix it more easily I think than a dripless unit where if something goes wrong uh, and you have to replace it for some reason you have to actually remove the prop shaft to replace that dripless seal unit. Now we've already got our prop shaft which was very kindly donated to this project along with the stern tube by Vetus. Uh, Vetus make very high quality uh, boat equipment um, and it's very well thought out in my experience and I'm very glad to have a high quality stainless steel prop shaft from them as well as the bronze stern tube. Now we do need to cut that prop shaft to its exact length so I'm going to put it in the boat, mark it up, take it out. We also have to machine a keyway into it at the forward end to engage with the coupling which is going to hold the prop shaft and attach it to the aqua drive. So there's a few machining jobs to do and for those we're going to just go over to the other side of the shed and talk to our friend Dylan who is an independent machinist who works in the same building as us uh, and he's going to help us out with them. My name is Dylan Mackay. I do machine work and fabricating in the shop here. And um, I do some structural steel. I end up doing a lot of aluminum fabrication. But right now, we're working on the shaft for the tally ho. And we're going to cut the keyway and face the coupling. Make a big old poster. Cuts a lot nicer. I'm not trying to go into some incredible RPM.
So far, we have uh, cut the shaft to length, faced it in the lathe, cut the key way on the mill, and we have made our key. We've also drilled and tapped a jacking screw because when you install a key into a shaft, you give it a slight interference fit and the coupling should be a slip fit. So when you take the key out, uh, rather than marring it up with a bunch of vice grips and whatever else you'd use, you just put a fastener in there and pops right out of there. The next step is to chuck the coupling up in the mill in the indexer and drill for our set screw and um, our set screw will just capture the couplings fore and aft orientation on the shaft and um, even though it's not absolutely necessary because this is a soft mounted drive line we're gonna fit and face this coupling in the lathe and uh, it's just easy we've got the tools here so why not So right now Dylan is just setting up to uh, drill a hole for a set screw in the coupling and so he's going to drill a pilot hole, dimple the shaft um, and then thread it of course. And this isn't necessarily uh, essential on all couplings but on this one we've just got a slightly loose fit between the prop shaft and the coupling. Not significantly but just the tiniest tiniest bit and so the set screw is just going to give uh, another layer of security to stop the shaft from sliding backwards out of the boat. Yeah, so, so the rest of our drive line is made out of super high grade uh, marine stainless steel. And, but this piece uh, is mild steel. Uh, so we have to coat it with um, this two part epoxy paint to protect it from rust and corrosion. And, uh, Are you doing a nice paint? Is it gonna be a nice paint job? No, it's it's not gonna be a nice paint job. It's gonna be lumpy. I'm doing the best I can, but damn. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It is off white, which is nice and yachty, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'll um, never be seen. Really. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure there's gonna be some comments anyway. Yeah. Right. If I know you've said that, there's probably gonna be even more comments on it. Yeah, let's see. Let's let's uh, yeah. What do you think of my paint job, YouTube? Also, what do you think of the custom Brushmaster 3000? Pretty good. You like that? Alright, so the prop shaft and the coupling are installed, that's really awesome. Uh, before we go on to the next stage, there's just one little thing I need to tell you guys. 
there's been someone uh, replying to comments in the YouTube videos pretending to be me and asking people to message them on an app called Telegram. It's a scam, it's not me. I'm never gonna message anyone asking for personal details or telling them they've won a prize. So if you get replies to your comments asking you to message me, it's not me. Don't do it, ignore it, delete it, report it, whatever. Now that is out of the way, let's get on with the easiest, but probably the most exciting part of this process, the unboxing and installation of the propeller. We're going to be using a four bladed feathering propeller from a company called Veriprop, uh, which are in Germany. Uh, what that means, the feathering part means that the blades will twist to allow the water to flow over them with the least amount of resistance when you're sailing, but will engage to however you set them, whichever pitch you set them at when you're motoring in forward or reverse. We did a lot of calculations about the best diameter, the best size, the best amount of blades, um, consulted a lot of different professionals, and this was the propeller we came up with. It's slightly smaller than is ideal, but it's a compromise because we didn't want to have to cut a huge hole in the rudder. This propeller will work with the regeneration capabilities of the electric motors uh, when you're under sail. Basically, you just have to lock the propeller into its reverse position uh, before you actually start sailing and regenerating. Okay, while well, the drive line is all installed, the shaft, the aqua drive, the bracket, the coupling, uh, and of course the propeller, and it's really fantastic to see it all in the boat. Uh, it's one of those little things which is uh, actually makes a big difference and makes you feel like the boat is a little bit close to the water. In fact, the boat is now, pretty much for the first time, uh, fully watertight in that it could float. As always, there's been a lot of other great work going on from everyone else in the team, so big thanks to everyone here involved, uh, and thanks to you for watching, and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference. It means that we're able to keep on doing this work, and I'm able to make and edit these videos, so I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.